want to have a discussion now of how the different hulls operate. Uh, there's several different type of hulls out there. Any boat out there floating is in a displacement mode, means it's displacing so much water is the reason it floats. Some hulls go faster by putting on more power. They stay in a displaced mode and they're referred to as displacement hulls. All of our hulls out there are planing hulls. Planing hulls go faster by getting what we call on plane, which is lifting the hull out of the water. The way we want to operate the boat is when we're not going anywhere, we're just looking around, we want the boat in the displacement mode. We're not burning any gas, we're not uh, tearing the boat up, not making a wake, and we're not going anywhere, right where we want to be. Now when it's time to get from point A to point B, we want to operate the boat efficiently. We want to get it up on the planing mode, getting hull out of the water. So we're going to use a lot of power to get up on, on plane, and when we get there, pull the RPM back to the point where you're just holding it in this up, very efficient operating range. If the water is smooth enough, you may be able to trim the motor up and lift even more of the hull out of the water. But this is where we want to operate the boat. Now going from point A to point B, we're going to burn the least amount of gas, we're going to make the smallest wake, and we're not going to tear the boat up right where we want to be. You shove on that extra power, it's not a Maserati, you're going to get four or five miles an hour faster, you're going to make a, a burn a ton more gas, beat the boat up, so let's operate that boat right in that optimum operating range where you're right on, on plane. The problem is in between these two modes of the displacement mode and the planing mode is the plowing mode. The plowing mode is when you can damage other people's property, you can swamp another boat. You want to go through the plowing mode quickly. If you're not pulling tubes or skiers or a wakeboard or something, you want to be out of the plowing mode. So it's power up quickly, get on top in the planing mode. When it's time to come out of the planing mode, bring the power smoothly but quickly or fairly rapidly back to the high idle RPM. The boat will set down, make one move, and then you're out of the plowing range. Certainly if you look up in front of you and you say, whoa, there's a fishing boat right there, don't do them the favor of, flowing, of slowing down, coming by with a big plowing wake and tossing them off the boat. So keep it out of the plowing mode as much as you can. Um, there it is. Make, avoid the plowing mode and make rapid but smooth transitions from the to and from the planing mode. Let's talk about the different types of uh, engines. We have a straight outboard engine. Now what we don't cover here, as we said before, is a straight inboard in which you have a prop and a rudder, and this is speed, this is steering. That's a completely different uh, propulsion system, and before you drive one you need to get checked out on it. But for all ours are out, our out drives, either straight outboard or the inboard outboard. The prop is providing all the motion. It is providing steering by direction, by pointing the direction of the propulsion and acceleration. The thing about a single prop is it pulls you through the water, but it pulls you through the water kind of the way John Wayne used to go down the sidewalk, a little sideways, and it's actually walking you through prop torque or prop walk sideways. Going forward, you don't notice it so much. But when you put it in reverse, you will notice it. And you may not be able to point that outdrive far enough to make the boat actually turn. With a little breeze or something going against your prop walk, you'll probably just go straight back and not be able to turn. Uh, it can get you in a situation you've got to be very careful. If you're prop walking in reverse towards something, it'll keep doing it until you hit that dock or something. So we'll talk in your training how you avoid uh, how you recognize that and get out of a prop walk situation. An inboard outboard that had a single prop would be exactly the same situation, but the boats we have, our inboard outboards, currently have dual counter rotating props. The one spinning one way and one spinning the other way, and it largely cancels that prop torque um, and the prop walk. These things back up almost as well as they do forward as far as turning, maneuvering. Uh, the thing is, this particular setup, the counter-rotating props do not slide in the water. They grab right now. Uh, they take off. If you use a little bump in power like you might need on a single prop to get the back end moving, you do that on a dual prop and you will take off right away. 
it does not slip in the water. You have to be very cautious, very smooth in driving a dual prop. You cannot reverse directions really quickly or it will be like that jet ski that flips in the water and throws everybody off and I promise you that is no fun in a 24 foot boat. So this thing is very, very maneuverable. It's very unforgiving of error. Making it, some people think, hard to drive. I think easy to drive. A single prop is, I think, difficult to drive, but very forgiving of error. So Jed, you have to know the characteristics of the two uh, units. Um, we're going to get in now some just basic boating principles. How boats turn, how boats move. A boat uh, is not totally like a car, but it's like a car on smooth ice. It is a free-floating object that goes around that has momentum in everything it does. A boat does not follow a lane like a car turning. A boat turns in a circular motion will cover and when it starts going straight it keeps drifting to the side. It has momentum on everything that it does and you have to be able to recognize and overcome the uh, and control the momentum. On a boat um, steering that we're not talking about the inboard now, but on the inboard, outboard, or straight outboard, all the steering and propulsion is done with the direction of the motor. So there's a couple of rules. There is no steer without gear. If you're not in gear, either forward or reverse, you're not steering the boat. Now that makes me a little bit uh, false because you have a little rudder steering as you're drifting to a stop. I highly recommend that you don't use that because you'll have the motor all the way over one way and especially in a dual prop put it in gear and you'll go straight sideways. So there's a little bit of a dilemma though but when you're in gear you're also accelerating which leads to that other rule. Decide how hard you want to hit something, leave that much power on or put that much power on and you will, the boat will comply and hit just as hard as you want. So the takeaway from that is when you're in close maneuvering Neutral is your best friend. If you're going in gear, it's either to accelerate or to turn back to neutral, and you'll actually develop a pace, something like in gear, neutral, react. Turn the wheel, in gear, neutral, react. Um, I want to cover now that the a boat turns around two distinct pivot points. So we're going to zoom in here and um, discuss how a boat actually turns. If we can picture that if I turn the motor to the side like this, this boat wants to go straight sideways, which it can't going forward because the hull digs in and the boat starts turning like this. Okay, And it develops a pivot point going forward. And it's about a third of the way back of the boat and it has some consequences. One being one end of the boat's going one way, and like, unlike a car, the other end's going the other way. You have two turn radiuses. If you are going forward, you can turn and miss something, and the back end is going to plow right into it. Okay? If I am past the forward pivot point, and I get too close to something, I can't miss it by turning away from it like a car. I have to turn towards it. If I happen to be within... 18 feet of a dock on a 24-foot boat, I can't take off and go. I'm going to hit the back end. So you have to know where the pivot point on the boat is and what the effect in the turn is. Now guess what happens when we put a boat in reverse? Now we start slinging the nose of the boat around and we develop a pivot point on the back of the boat. And it has all the same consequences in reverse. And that being now, the stern has a, a shorter turn radius than the bow. I will turn and miss something with the bow, and I'll, I'm with the stern rather, and I'll plow the bow, the bow right in. Okay? If I am past the reverse pivot point and I get too close to something, I can't miss it by turning away from it. I've got to miss it by turning it into it to swing the bow away. If I'm within 18 feet of a dock in reverse, I can't take off and go, I'll hit the bow. In either one of these situations, I can find myself some distance by backing slowly away till the pivot point gets far enough where I can clear. Or going forward, I can buy a little distance by going forward a little away from the dock until that pivot point gets far enough that we can turn. 
down here. So you've got to know where the pivot points are, the boat, uh, are on the boat, and when you get on your on-water portion, we'll demonstrate the difference in the radius of turns and the bow and the stern. Um, one thing I want to point out here is that unless you've driven a whole lot recently, I have these rules here that unlike a car, forward is forward throttle, reverse is reverse throttle. What do I mean by that? If you think about it, when you're in your car, if you're in neutral and you want to drive away from something behind you, you pull back, which in a boat is reverse. If you get too close to something and you want to back away from it, then you push the throttle up or forward. In a boat, that goes forward, not reverse. So what I see is all the time we get near a dock, and all of a sudden the boat goes in forward. And the eyes get big, and then the power comes on, and we go shooting in towards the dock, and I think, what's going on? Well, you realize that you are now doing the most natural thing that you do all day, every day. When you get near the dock, you want to back up. You want to back up, more back up. So remember, it'll help you out that in a boat, forward is forward throttle, reverse is reverse throttle. Another thing we want to do is we don't ever want to beat a turn by applying power. What do I mean by that? When you increase power and speed, you increase your radius of turn a lot more than your rate of turn, which is exactly the opposite of what you want to do when you're in, cl in close. You want to increase usually your rate of turn without increasing your radius of turn. So if you even think you're close, getting too close to the turn to miss something, don't apply power and try to beat the turn. You'll just hit it really, really hard. Um, usually when you get in close, what you do want to do is increase your rate of turn without increasing your radius of turn. It's going to stop with the, my terminology here of stop the boat. Stop the boat is station keeping. It means you are working the hardest you're going to work all day long with a combination of forward and reverse to make sure that the boat is not going forward or back and the boat is not rotating. Very big combination of forward and reverse to stop the boat. You are still going to be drifting on whatever momentum was, and at that point you can recognize what the momentum is and start maneuvering the boat to increase your radius of turn to get away from something. Um, it's going to be a series of pivot turns using the two different pivot points. It's not unlike making a three-point turn on a two-lane road except you have no brake. You're drifting the whole time. So to see what it looks like, we have a couple of videos we can, we can view uh, that give a real good explanation of it. Um, first one, the short version, and then if you're interested, you can uh, refer to the longer version for a good explanation. Going into a tight situation, we are going to stop the boat and then wheel first, drop it in gear, back to neutral, spin the wheel the other way, drop it in reverse. Put it in neutral, spin the wheel forward, neutral, if you needed to again, reverse and safely drive the boat to open water. It's called a pivot turn and your on water instructor will cover that with you real well. Uh, the second link on there is just a longer version of the same thing. Okay, what does wind do to a boat? Wind will do two things to a boat. One, you can do nothing about but know it and plan on it. And if we look down here again, that is the wind is going to displace the boat. If this is the wind coming from this direction, you are going downwind. Even if you're going directly into the wind, you're still being displaced downwind. You're just overcoming it with power. You have to know it, recognize it, and plan on it. If you happen to be trying to get into a, a slip or a dock, or something like that, and the wind's blowing that way, at some point the wind owns you, you are going downwind. You're either going to start a little bit on the upwind, hopefully you time it, get in there, start from the downwind, use the momentum of a turn, the boat to get it to come into the slip or 
get back out of there because the wind owns you. Nothing you can do about it, but know it, plan on it, and uh, use it. The other thing the wind will do to a boat is the wind will rotate the boat. And the wind, a boat likes into the wind, depending on the hull shape, from anywhere from 3 to 15 degrees. And at that point, when the wind gets on this side, we can see that, the boat is going to turn here. As soon as the bow goes through the wind, everything changes, and the boat goes the other way. At this time, everything that boat is being told to do is displaced down this way. So a very, very good exercise you can get and you should try some time in the wind, your instructor will do what you can, is we'll say we're going to stop the boat, my terminology, directly into the wind. And then we're going to picture that we had a wood box built all around the boat. And we can't go forward, back, we can't do anything else. All we can do is just a little bit of forward, back to find out what happened. It's an excellent thing to do to find out what the wind does to a boat and how everything changes when the bow goes through the wind. Okay? If I told you to stop the boat with the wind on the side, that would be very, very easy, and you probably will not even be able to back this boat back up into the wind. If I told you to stop the boat, in my terminology, with the wind right on your stern, you'd be pretty bored because you're good through about 40, 45 degrees before the wind change catches it and goes. And one of the ramifications of that is sometimes it's easier to back a boat into a tight situation than it is to maneuver it forward in a tight situation. But here is one thing I want you to never ever try in a single engine boat. Don't ever try to back into a slip with the wind on your nose. As soon as you go past that rear pivot point, you're going sideways and there's not a thing you can do about it. So don't ever try that. Leave that to the people with twin engines and bow thrusters and things like that. Okay, the next thing to know is what does current do to a boat. There's not much current in um, most lakes, but if you get into a current, the current is going to drastically displace the boat. You are going down the water just like a cork on a river, but it's not going to rotate the boat. So it's really important that you know the vector summation of everything that the wind does to a, to a boat. Now there's lots of indications of the wind. You'll see forecast wind. You'll see flags, uh, you'll see ripples on the water out there, but the one that is most important when you get into close-in maneuvering is the wind right here. The wind you feel on your face. If I'm maneuvering and I feel the wind over here, and all of a sudden I'm pulling the slip and I feel the wind over here, everything just changed. So always be conscious when you're close-in maneuvering, where is that wind? How is it affecting the boat? What's the total vector summation of what the wind's doing to the boat? Very, very important. The only other thing we have to do is uh, to cover a repeat of our critical training items that we do, and we want to re repeat these several times. Critical training items are out drives fully down for all engine starts, any time before you start it up, crank it up. Out drives in the trim range for all operations, including shallow water operations, and for an inboard outboard, it's that long three second count, is the maximum you can go up. We want fenders in a proper location for all dockings. That means that they are not airbags sitting in the boat. They're fenders when they're between the boat and the dock. And that means that they are on the right side of the boat, that they're in the right position on the boat, and they're on the right height for different levels of docks. Um, we are not going to allow any rafting of our boats. No tying the boats up together. Um, uh, good time to tear the boats up. We will also not beach the boats. No beaching of the boats, including our tri-tunes. Walk and anchor in as shallow as you want, but let's keep the boat floating all the time. As we said, there is no check engine soon light on the boat. It's immediate shutdown for any alarms, vibration, unusual noises, something doesn't feel right, you shut it down and check it out. Uh, engine off for any swimmer near the boat. Neutral is never good enough. We also want to use caution with any line or rope around the boat, and that is dock lines, anchor lines, ski lines, anything. They are a threat to the boat and the prop, equipment on the boat, they're a threat to personnel. So when you're going to be pulling skiers around or somebody back there, let's make sure we review our hand signals 
because no sounds a lot like go, and if you take off when somebody's not ready, you can really hurt them. So make sure you use caution with any rope in, in the water. And when we're picking up skiers and tubers, uh, we will keep them in sight during all recoveries. Unlike some other things we're going to cover in some maneuvering things and uh, emergency situations, in skiers, you always keep them in sight when you're picking them up. And that pretty much concludes this portion of the new member orientation.